The other figure I chose um, because he's so crucial to the uh, making of the Chinese intelligentsia and indeed a uh, huge influence on the first generation of Chinese communist leaders who eventually assumed power in India, in China, was Liang uh, Chichao, who really in many ways you could call him the, China's foremost uh, modern intellectual who came out of uh, sort of very tradition-minded uh, Confucian family and was all set to uh, follow um, his uh, ancestors into the civil services and then he was uh, jolted out of that traditional uh, path by a growing awareness of uh, China's fallen state in the international order uh, and the great moment for him was um, China's defeat by Japan in uh, 1895 and Japan uh, had been a kind of pupil of China for such a long time nobody ever imagined that they would be they would, they would grow so strong as to start lording it over China. So this is a great uh, source of humiliation to a whole generation of Chinese activists. And Liang was one of them who articulated that sense of humiliation and sense of defeat. Uh, also, the Boxer Rising, which was a very another important milestone in his thinking, and the subsequent uh, attempt to slice the Chinese melon, as it came to be called, by various uh, foreign powers, including even um, Italy tried to get into the action at that particular point. So that uh, sense of uh, humiliation or the sense of China being utterly helpless and vulnerable and, and what does China need to do in order to survive, in order to hold its head up with dignity, I think these were the challenges that Liang grappled with for most of his life. And even though some of his solutions, I mean, he, ch he changed positions uh, over several years um, of you know, thinking and traveling. He was a Confucianist. He became a liberal demo democrat. And then he decided that wasn't the right thing for China. He went back to Confucianism. But in all his struggles, all his uh, kind of very uh, hectic travels and thinking, he came up with these ideas that became hugely important, influential for a second generation. And Mao Zedong was a young man when he started to read Liang Chichao. And, Liang's whole vision of uh, China being weak, China being China being preyed upon by uh, Western powers and Japan that uh, was crucial to Mao Zedong's forming his worldview, which eventually became, as we know, extremely uh, paranoid uh, worldview. But uh, likewise with many other Chinese communists who parted ways with Liang uh, politically, of course, but they internalized that particular vision of China being constantly under threat by foreign powers and what China needed to do to consolidate itself. He uh, goes back and writes a book saying, uh, this is very bad news for China because if we don't strengthen ourselves fast enough, these multinational corporations that are developing in America, and America has now completed its internal expansion and it's now looking for international markets, um, they will come over and uh, in just in the way we were subjugated by the British during the Opium Wars with their commercial interests. We are going to be subjugated yet again. And that what China needs to do is build up its industrial strength very, very fast. Forget about democracy. He was a dem dem Democrat until that point. Uh, but what we right, need to do is build up our industrial strength. And the only way we can do it is not through socialism. Socialism doesn't work for us. Socialism is something that European societies develop because there was so much inequality there due to industrialization. Uh, we don't have industrialization. We haven't had any of that. So it's completely useless for us. What we need is for the state to become strong and then to support its businessmen, support its big businessmen. In other words, to have the kind of state capitalism, which you could argue in many ways, the current regime in, in China has now developed. Mm -hmm.